Hi everyone. Well, this should scare you if anything does. All these flesh-eating bacterias. You go in for a surgery, you come out with a flesh-eating bacteria, you have to go in for many, many more surgeries to try and fix this. Sometimes it kills you. More than likely it's gonna kill you. There is more than one. One is necrotizing fasciitis. Then there's the most common, which is MRSA. Now, MRSA is a pain in the ass. If you don't know how to get rid of it, you're not going to get rid of it. One of my grandchildren had it. She was only a baby. She couldn't go to daycare. She had to stay with me. We treated it. It was gone. She went back to her mom. She started going back to daycare. She got it again and again and again. What in the heck? Why did it keep coming back? We didn't know what the hell was going on. They were giving her medicines that can make her bleed internally until she dies. We didn't know what to do. We were scared to death. I thought, oh my God, I cannot lose my grandchild to this flesh-eating bacteria. MRSA. Staph infection, whatever you want to, you want to call it. I was like, something's got to be going on to where she keeps getting it back. It wasn't the daycare. There's nobody at the daycare that had it. No babies had it her clothes did she wash them did she bleach them like i told her to everything her sheets her blankets every day bleach them clothes she did that one final thing i mean i racked my brain her car seat cover it was her car seat cover carrying that MRSA and she kept getting it over and over and over again it started on her bottom and that's where she would get those blisters from if you're dealing with MRSA, make sure you don't miss anything. You'll never get rid of that crap. And the beaches. Also, you could pick up staph infection, MRSA, from the sand. Next up is Vibrio fulmiticus. You, it's called the flesh-eating bacteria, but you could also get it from raw seafood, drinking seawater, swallowing seawater, or being in the ocean with an open wound. The stuff thrives in warm seawater. Walking along the beach, walking on the rocks, there's shells, got your foot on a rock or a shell, just a little tiny cut, you don't even know it. You go in the water, next thing you know, boom, it kills you. That's terrible, that's pretty scary. If the bacteria is consumed, it could cause nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and stomach pains. Through an open wound, it could cause skin ulcers, discoloration, skin breakdowns, bloodstream infections, and the bloodstream infections are fatal. And this is most cases. And to all you pool goers who love to splash around all summer long, there's also a parasite. It's called Cryptosporidium. It loves warm water, and it could last up to 10 days. And it loves hot tubs pools. Unlike E. coli, it can be killed in a treated pool in a matter of minutes. This one likes to stick around. It causes gastrointestinal problems, which causes severe diarrhea, and it, you can't absorb the nutrients in the food as you should. Even dehydration and death are a possibility. Remember, you're putting your body in that pool. You might want to check the status of their last test. This is just one person's story of having a flesh-eating bacterial infection. There's quite a few out there. One of them had to do with um, a C-section and she just had a child. And she worked at that hospital. But I'm going to let you go ahead and hear the story. I appetite. I was urinating a lot more. The doctor thought it was a urinary tract infection. They gave me antibiotics and sent me home. And then the next day I felt thousand times worse. I went back to the doctor and he decided to do a CT scan. He came into the room and he told me that you would need to go have surgery right away. At that point I had no idea how severe this was. They wheeled me into the operating room. The next thing I remember is waking up in the ICU and looking down and seeing a giant open wound in my stomach that was bloody and scary looking. A couple days later, I was diagnosed with a flesh-eating disease, and the bacteria was basically starting to eat away at my insides for 
three months, I had an open wound in my stomach that had to be stuffed with gauze and changed out. It was a horrible experience. I don't forget it. Now I have this huge scar on my stomach. I hate looking at it. I think it's disgusting. It's affected my marriage. My husband says it's the grossest thing ever. When I look at my stomach, it seems like I went through three months of some awful, awful horror story. I just, I want it gone. Everyone, please welcome Gina to our show, who has been through so much. But I do want to say one thing. We are so happy that you're here, and we're happy you're alive, because that necrotizing fasciitis, it could have killed you, and we are just so blessed. One in four people who get necrotizing fasciitis will die, and so thank you for being here and sharing your story. I'm you're glad to be here. A few things in your tape piece in your story we were talking about that's just so very hard that people don't want to discuss is when you go through something like this, not only is your health at risk, but it affects everything from your, your personal life to your relationships. And body and image and this has not been easy for you and your husband, has it? No, it has not. He thinks the scar is disgusting, but I don't really blame him. I think it's just awful looking as well. And, and Dr. So. Orton, know, I mean, you know a lot about this case. And the I secret do. here is that we actually set Gina up with Dr. Orton for a consult. Let's take a look. First of all, you know, I'm sorry what you what you had to go through. How do you feel when you look down and see how things have healed up? I hate looking at it. I just don't like the scar. It's gross. These types of situations, the healing is never ideal. The surgeons, their concern was to get all that infection out, not necessarily to leave you with the prettiest tummy possible that really has retracted and almost formed two halves with a big dent in the middle. They had to create this ileostomy here and they had to let things heal from the inside out. I think the single best important thing is number one, give it more time because it's not completely healed. And two, we need to get a CT scan, a test to see how things are going on that abdominal wall. You very well may be a candidate for abdominal reconstruction. It's going to be a big operation that's going to involve using what we call surgical mesh to reconstruct and support the abdominal wall. And I want you to leave here today with some hope because uh, in time, and things can be made a lot better. Since then, the show and I have done a little research on our part and we have found an excellent board certified plastic surgeon, Dr. James Lee in Green Bay, Wisconsin, closer to where you're from, who has agreed to see you in consultation and see if you're, when appropriate, uh, determine if you are a good surgical candidate. He has offered to fix this at no charge to you. That'd be amazing. Well, thanks for watching, and just remember, be careful out there. There's only one you. Watch your bacteria.